A primal test of strength kicks off the strongman competition at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. The Tower of Power is next. in the world have gathered here to compete at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. And for the second straight year, we kick things off with that. The Tower of Power, the first of six events in the Strawman competition. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet. And as I mentioned, this is the second straight year that we have opened up with this event. What are you most excited to see here over the next 30 or so minutes? Oh, we are starting with a true power test. The deadlift, always an event that these athletes want to win. Trey Mitchell did the most out of the athletes that are competing this year. So exciting to see what shape he's in. But we've got a whole host of athletes that want to win the deadlift. Mentioned that there are six total events in the strongman competition. We are going to have three today and three tomorrow, weather permitting. Now, these times right now are subject to change in the strongman competition as weather has thrown a little bit of a wrench into things throughout the weekend. If things need to be adjusted, they will be communicated with plenty of time beforehand to the athletes in order to keep the competition fair and safe. After the Tower of Power, we're going to the Iron Bull sled pull. And then we're going to close things out later this evening with the ultimate log medley. But the Tower of Power, that is what is in front of us. That is presented by GORUCK. You're going to have 60 seconds to lift 1,000 pounds, nearly 1,000 pounds, as many times as you possibly can. Yeah, 1,000 pounds. It's actually heavier than last year's competition, so we may see a few less reps, but it's all about leg power, back power, and just brute strength. Uh, here is your start list for this competition. Defending champion Alexei Novikov, he will be going second, and then two men will be keeping our eyes on. Tom Stolman will be going fourth, and then Mitchell Hooper will be going third. We expect that to be a good battle throughout the weekend. Kiki Dixon is the third member of our broadcast team as she is down there with the Tower of Power with more on this opening event. 15,000 pounds of yellow pines timber that was sourced right here from Texas. They paired it with brackets that were manufactured at Rogue and you are looking at 2,000 pounds of metal on the Tower of Power. This event matters for a lot of reasons, right? Not only the points up for grabs, but it also determines their seating for the next event, the Iron Bowl, which no one has done before. Better seating means that you get to sit back, watch the other strong men go and take some notes. Thank you, Kiki. Let's talk about keys to this opening event here, Laws. This event is it's a true test of power. We're talking leg strength, back strength, making sure your hips are locked out. Really starting the contest off with a strong man event. You know, these athletes, they love to win a deadlift. It's bragging rights behind scenes. It's an event that everyone wants to be the best at. Like I mentioned earlier, Trey Mitchell got the most reps on this out of the athletes competing. Unfortunately, uh, Pavlo Nekinecini is not here to defend his win on this event. But we have some new athletes that I think are worth looking at as well, particularly Evan Singleton. He's had a great year this year. He's a thousand pound puller from the floor. I'm interested to see how he can do on this All variation. Right, here is Mateo Kierlaskowski. He will kick things off here, making his second appearance at the Rogue Invitational. Last time he was here was in 2021 when he finished in fourth. So this really isn't his favorite event. When he, if, if you have an athlete that has so many strengths like him, this is his kryptonite, if you like. He's not performed well on the deadlift the last couple of times we've seen him, and that confidence seems to kind of affect him a little bit with it as well. I haven't seen him compete for a few months. He says training is going well. Let's take a look at how he does. 
This is the last time in the upper left-hand part of your screen that Mateusz was here at the Rogue Invitational, and we had that Wheel of Pain implement. He was finished fourth, and we were talking about this earlier on these deadlift events. If he can just get this middle of the road, he is a threat to get himself on the podium and maybe on top. Absolutely. Well, we saw him as recently as um, the Arnolds this year, where he came second to Mitch Hooper. Amazing performance, winning events, just the deadlift was what let him down. It's where he's losing the most points on. He needs to make sure he can pick up a few points on this just to build that confidence going into the stronger events as the contest moves forward. Well, Kalish Kotsky will get us kicked off here in the Tower of Power. The 60 seconds, max reps here. And it's not looking good right from the start there. He doesn't need to worry about rushing his time. He knows he's not going to be one of the athletes getting double figures. But he needs a rep. It's really important to start the competition, get a point on the board. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Kieliszkowski continuing to pull, and he's just not going to be able to get a good rep. And it's so frustrating, you know, you'll pull that and it's one of those events where you're just strong enough or you're not. It's an event he's lost so much confidence on the last couple of years. He had a lat injury that affects the back very much. And he, he just because he's had so many poor performances now, I think sometimes it plays on his mind. You can see the, the head shaking there. Not the start that Kiliuszkowski would have wanted. Mateusz Kieliszkowski descends the Tower of Power without getting a good rep and not the start he is looking for here in this competition is once again in a deadlift event putting himself in an early hole and that will bring up our defending champion Alexei Novikov. Alexei Novikov coming in, and, and it's strange that you would have a defending champion who is not the favorite. It is strange, and Alexei is, you know, he's a, a class act. He's someone that has done so well in so many competitions. As you say there, the defending champion. He's, he's just had a tough time recently. He's had a few operations. I was speaking to him last night, and he's starting to feel a bit more confident again. He's starting to see some form return, and I think he wants to really show he is still one of the best athletes out there this weekend. He said to me, he's not 100%, but every week training's got better. And this is an event he can do very well at. He got nine reps on this last year. He likes the higher deadlifts. His lockout is very, very strong. So it'll give us a good indication of where he's at right now. A strong start on this. He's going to put himself in a good position. The past couple of events in which he has competed have not been solid results for him. He was 10th at the Shaw Classic. Yeah, the last, last two shows have not been the best for him at all. But before that, it's very rare that we'd see him off a podium. One of the most consistent performers, and I want to see him back to his best. Such a strong performance at the Rogue last year. And he's the only athlete that's competed in every single strongman competition at the Rogue Invitational. Had that impressive performance on the Sear Bell, uh, won that event. And now looking to start things off here with a solid showing in the Tower of Power. Just prowling around, looking focused. He wants to get started. The nerves before the first event are always the worst. Still only 27 years old as well. He's achieved so much in his young career. Still time to add plenty of titles to what he's already won. Has 11 international contest wins and 38 appearances. Looking to add to that total here as he makes his way up the Tower of Power.
Novikov getting some final instructions from the judges before he will grab hold of that bar. 60 seconds for max reps here. So the athletes are using these straps to attach themselves to the bar. This isn't about grip strength on this. They want to focus on back and leg strength. Novikov has his time started. There we go, the first rep that we've seen so far today. Solid second rep there for Alexei Novikov. Looking good, getting into a nice rhythm. Perfect positioning there. Nice solid lockout. Last year, Alexi got nine repetitions. What can he do this year? He's on six so far. Thick leather belt just to protect that lower back. Straps so he doesn't have to worry about the grip strength. Then it's all about driving hard into the floor with the legs, pulling with the back at the same time. And six repetitions is our lead after two athletes. Good start for our defending Rogue Invitational Champion. Six good reps. And it looked like once he found that groove, he was able to move that pretty efficiently. Yeah, he's a very technical lifter, Alexi is. Very well trained. He has, you know, he's one of those, just make sure the movement patterns are practiced over and over again. When he gets into that rhythm, he's flying. I think this year they have made that deadlift heavier, though. Nearly a thousand pounds total that they are lifting. And Alexei Novikov, who's done very well here at the Rogue Invitational in his career, of course, the defending champion, but his prior appearance to that was in 2021 when he was on the podium in third place. So one more look at Alexei Novikov's effort here. Look at that. Maintains good back position. You can see the wobble at the top of that bar. It's not the same as a normal deadlift. Those attachments and the, and the length of the pivots just make it unstable. Requires a little more core strength to lock out and stay locked out. Luckily, the referees are down pretty quick on the signal. I think Alexi's going to be happy with this start. It's always hard when you, you're one of the early ones to go. You know, as as a you know, you've got the three current, well, the three last winners of the world's strongest man going after each other. So we'll really understand what a good number is after Tom and Mitch go. And you heard Kiki earlier talking about the importance of seeding going into these later events. It's such an advantage when you get to go late. I mean, that goes without saying, but... Especially with an event that we have coming up. You know, it's a new event that we've got as, as our second event, and the athletes will want to watch a few of the other athletes go before they have to. Mitch Hooper, he managed eight repetitions on this last year, so let's see what shape his deadlifting is in. And we talked about this on the Iron Game with uh, Dr. Bill Crawford and Jerry Pritchett, but this guy has been on an absolute tear. He debuted in 2022 at the World's Strongest Man final and he finished eighth. That's the last time he's been off the podium. So far, 12 international podiums in a row. Five wins out of those 12 and last year had a really impressive debut at the Rogue Invitational when he finished third overall. And that performance that we're seeing there on the TV screen right now, the yoke into the log. He was unbelievably quicker. I know he's looking forward to trying the Fingles finger into the log later on in this contest. But right now, he needs to focus on this deadlift. So just showing his weaknesses and strengths on the screen there. Luckily for Mitch, there is no out of stones. He has had some very good performances in that. So he's one of those athletes that tends to go and analyze any weakness and work hard and improve. But his endurance is incredible. He's fast. He's athletic. He's a fast learner. That's why he's such a, a consistent performer. Mitch Hooper trying to go after Alexei Novikov's mark of six good reps here. He 
is just about set. He's got a very serious look on his face this year. Normally, Mitch is a bit more jovial and joking about. He seems here and ready for business. First event. The Tower of Power. Six reps is the target set by Alexei Novikov. Let's see what kind of shape Mitch Hooper is in. We are underway. And that first one is no problem for Mitch Hooper. Very similar to Alexei Novikov. You see that there's almost like a tiny sticking point just around the knee, and then he maintains that power and just the rep pops up. Already up to four, looking good. Down signal from the referee. This to tie Novikov at six, and now for the lead. And Hooper has it. Good reps here by Mitch Hooper. Trying to get the crowd involved. He wants some help. Using the time to his advantage. He's not rushing. He knows one more rep is going to be big. Not, not, not quite it. there. Of course, it. blood coming out the nose. We're used to seeing that from Mikhail Shivlikov, who was not here. It was his signature. And it's that's how hard these guys are working. That, that is exactly it. It's the build-up of blood pressure in the body. You know, they're putting so much effort into lifting this weight. Seven repetitions there for Mitch Hooper. Puts himself into the lead. Good start. Now, Mitch Hooper looking to keep that podium streak alive here at the Rogue Invitational. Is now your leader, though, but still plenty of men to go. Again, great positioning from Mitch. The back is in a nice, solid position. He's driving hard with the legs. Hips pop through. There we go. And that's what I was talking about. Because of that flex and that, at the, um, the link on the chain, it kind of pulls, stops, and they've got to maintain that tension, keep pulling, and then suddenly it pops up. But it's a very awkward height to pull from because you do lose a lot of your natural leg drive. And you've just got to really stick with it, keep pulling hard, and then eventually, if you're strong enough, it will pop up. Tom Stoltman will be up next. Now, Tom's deadlift has improved tremendously the last couple of years. He's looking very, very powerful. I saw him compete last weekend. Looked like a man possessed. He is focused. He's hungry again. And he's in fantastic form. Just recently won the deadlift at the Shaw Classic, which is a similar higher pull. I'm expecting to see some good numbers from the big Scott. Tom Stoltman making his second appearance at the Rogue Invitational. 2021 was the last time we saw him compete here. He finished second overall and won the Giants Live World Tour Finals just a week ago. And it's funny, I've seen a lot of comments from people saying that, um, you know, Tom shouldn't be competing back to back. That time he was second, he competed the week before as well. So. I don't expect it to affect him at all. He's a great professional, strong man. He's in good shape. No, no, no weaknesses anymore with Tom. He's kind of constantly improving. And the deadlift is an event he's really made huge progress in the last few years. So talking of strengths and weaknesses, his ability to move awkward objects, atlas stones, sandbags, things like that. He's just got such a huge wingspan. His overhead power has improved tremendously. We always spoke about his brother's overhead power, but just recently, last weekend, he beat Luke on the log for Max. And the deadlift, as I said, very strong for Tom. Doesn't need to worry about grip. He gets to use the straps on this, on this bar. You can just see the red straps around his wrists there. That just eliminates any need for grip. They can pull aggressively. And we're just focusing on that leg, back, leg and back straight. Right, Tom Solman making his way up the Tower of Power, trying to beat Mitchell Hooper's mark of seven good reps. So Tom hasn't used this bit of kit before. But as I said, this type of height deadlift does suit him. How can you simulate this in training? 
Really, you, you, you kind of vary your deadlift heights. You kind of try and fo focus on pulling from a similar height. Very difficult to go and make a tower of power. Yeah. Um, but Tom will have kind of mimicked this best he can, pulling from blocks or potentially a rack. Using a stiffer bar as well. Sometimes the deadlift bars flex quite a lot. You don't tend to get that on this bar. Here goes Tom. Again, you just see that little momentary pause after the pull. They have to stay tight, keep pulling hard, and Tom is looking good. Just slowing down a little there on the fourth rep, but he's still with a good rep. Closing in on Alexei Novikov's target of six. So we're getting hung up here at four. The tallest athlete by a long, long way. And 19 inches, which is the, uh, the height that we're pulling from, is a very rare height that we see athletes pulling from. Normally, you're looking at either 9 inches, which is a standard deadlift from the floor, or 18 inches. And Tom is going to call it after four reps. I could expect a little bit better there from Tom. His deadlifting has been very good all year. But he's not used this implement before, whereas uh, Mitchell Hooper and Alexei Novikov, obviously, they got to use this last year. And I, as I said earlier, I do believe it's heavier this year than it was last year. Really nice first few reps. You can see the shaking at the top. This bar is hard. Really moved at a nice clip through those first three, and then this is where it started to slow down a bit. That was his fourth and final rep. I think that's something we see with Tom. He's either extremely powerful or it's kind of like the gas just kind of goes completely. Some athletes, you see them burn out a little. Tom's one of those, he just makes it look easy until he hits empty. Four reps for Tom Stoltman as we are through four athletes. Six remain and Luke Stoltman will be the next man up. Luke's second appearance at the Rogue Invitational. He was eighth back in 2021. Luke's such a great character as well, someone that does so much for the sport. Obviously, he's a great big brother uh, and cares about Tom, but he's a fantastic athlete in his own right. Former Europe's strongest man. Multiple finalist at World's Strongest Man, and this is a second appearance here at the Rogue Invitation. Eighth place the last time he was here in 2021. And you mentioned what he does for the sport. And one of the things that impressed me the most is that both he and his brother, Tom, how late they would stay after the competition, talking to the fans, signing autographs, taking pictures. as great ambassadors you know, for the strongman world. Absolutely. I mean, all these guys, they, they know without the fans, there is no strongman. And, and Luke, you've got to remember, is one of those guys that's seen the evolution of the sport. He was competing back with myself in front of no one. <laughs> you know, now we're competing at the Rogue Invitational, the Arnolds, you know, there's these big, huge events that are going on all over the world. And it means so much that he can still be a part of it. He's got some fantastic events. Unfortunately, the deadlift normally isn't one of them, but if he can get a rep, he's gonna be very, very pleased. And he's, he's got the leg power. His legs are huge, and when he does deadlift, you usually see those, the drive off the floor is excellent, and then he tends to weaken towards the lockout. This pull takes that leg drive out a little bit, so we will see how it affects Luke. And like his brother coming off a recent competition as well, he finished fifth at the Giants Lab World Tour Finals on October 21st. He did indeed, only six days ago. That's how soon they were competing. And obviously in front of a home crowd, you want to put on that performance, you want to win. But they're competitors and they, they come here to win as well. I know speaking to Tom, he wants this title. Luke wants to prove he deserves to be here. There's been question marks with his performance this year. He's been up and down, you know, still without question one of the best in the world. But when you're up against the best in the world week in, week out, it's easy to not look that good. He needs to show that he's still got events that he can beat anyway. Looking forward to seeing how he can do on the log medley later on today and the axle, the uh, Apollon's axle tomorrow. He loves the pressing events. But he's got to get strapped in now and show us what he can do on the deadlift. 
Seven reps from Mitchell Hooper is the score to beat. His brother Luke just put up four. If he can match that, it would tie him for third place right now. Bears Kieliszkowski was unable to get a single rep, so he currently sits in fourth place. I think realistically, Luke could be looking for a rep because a rep could potentially get him a few points on this. And it's coming up nicely. Lockout is hard. Does he get the down signal? Yes, he does. That's a big, big rep for Luke Stoltman. There's potentially a couple of athletes that are still to come that might not get a rep. He knows Kieliszkowski zeroed. If he can get three or four points out of the deadlift, he'll be very, very pleased. And he's going to be good with one rep right now. Puts him in fourth place with five athletes remaining. I think he might have felt a little pull in his pec there as well. He knows it's a, a long contest with some good events to come. And one rep for Luke. Very, very good start. Just checked in with one of the members of the medical staff there in the red shirt. Waved him off. Medical guy gave him a thumbs up. So hopefully... Luke is okay. As okay as you can be after lifting that much weight. Yeah. I mean, something that probably some people watching won't appreciate is how humid it is right now here in Texas as well. And Luke is an athlete that sweats a lot. So he's going to be going through a few t-shirts, I imagine, this weekend. <laughs> Needs to make, make sure he stays hydrated. First event. Doesn't want to do anything too crazy. One rep for Luke Stoltman. Currently puts him in fourth place as we are halfway through the opening event for the Strongmen here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. We have two more remaining today and then three more tomorrow. And as you mentioned, the humidity weather has been a factor here over the past couple of days. It rained heavily yesterday. Yesterday was, was pretty brutal, wasn't it? Um, it was. <laughs> so far, so far it's staying dry. Um, and if it stays like this, the athletes will be happy. We have Trey Mitchell coming out. Trey Mitchell hit 10 reps on this deadlift last year. He's a huge deadlift. He's a huge powerhouse. And he's coming into this contest bigger than we've ever seen before. He's up at over 400 pounds. Very much like Zadrinus of esque He's just big and powerful. Walks around slowly. But then when it's time to compete, he's an absolute animal. And that start in the Tower of, the pow of Power really gave him the momentum that he needed to finish second to Alexei Novikov last year. That was an impressive performance from Trey Mitchell. He was fantastic last year. Really, really good. I know he's been training hard for this competition. I've kind of kept an eye on his training. He's looking good. And the deadlift is an event he loves, so he'll want to start off with some big points on this one. And he's been on a bit of a roll lately, too, as well. He's finished fifth or better in his last eight competitions. He, he is now, Trey Mitchell, when you kind of talk about strongman, if Trey Mitchell is competing, he's in the, the conversation as a contender. He's a quiet, mild-mannered person. He's not, he's not like a big YouTube personality or social media personality, but you know he's training hard in the background. And when it comes to competition, he is one of the best in the world right now. Really likes the deadlift. And again, it was last year, those 10 reps on the Tower of Power, that result. Put him in great position for the rest of the weekend. He was able to hang on and finish in second place overall. It's just his second appearance at the Rogue Invitational. second on your first appearance. A bad start. The problem with that, you've only got one way to go. <laughs> Very hard to improve on that. He's a two-time winner of the Shore Classic. He would love to add to that list. He looks as wide as a tank right now. And that size could help him on this. It's a very heavy deadlift. We've got a real mixture of events this weekend. The size will, get, will be beneficial in some events, maybe not so beneficial in others. But a great start here could put him in a fantastic position because I think that extra body weight could help on the, um, the ball pull that we're going to see later on today. And if he has a, anything close to what he got last year in this event, he'll have a shot of supplanting Mitchell Hooper atop the standings in this event. Seven reps, still the best mark we've seen so far. That'll be the target he'll be looking at. Eight reps will be in his head. Still got a couple of good deadlifters to come, but I think he'll be looking at Mitch Hooper. Mitch Hooper's target there of seven as where he needs to be.
straps himself in. There's no rushing with Trey Mitchell. It's all methodical, all power. Like a tractor, just powerful. Maybe not the fastest athlete out there. Clock has started and Mitchell already rips through one and now he's through two reps. He's moving really well as well. Powers through four. the third place trying to track down Alexi Novikov for second there it is he still looks like he's got more in him and he has plenty of time he needs to not rush focus on two more reps he'll put himself into first place and I think it's going to be very hard for him to get to match eight reps. that's seven there's to match seven this for the lead and Trey Mitchell once again on the tower of power just needs to stay gets the down signal and he is your new leader <laughs> And he knows Bobby Thompson's to come. He'll be the only guy I think he'll look at that think could potentially push that. But he's still trying another rep, and he's over the knees. Can he lock out? Oh. See Rob Kearney doing that a lot. He's Rob's not here, but Trey trying to do everything he can to get that last rep, and he is your new leader. Eight good reps for Big Tex here to open things up in the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Trey showing he is here. He means business. Second place last year at the Rogue Invitational. He wants the win. He's coming bigger than ever. He's looking powerful. Eight reps. Puts himself into the lead on the deadlift. Tower of Power. Working his way back down the Tower of Power. And what an incredible effort from Trey Mitchell to start things off here. We have just four men left. But let's take another look. Look how fast these first few were. Just if, if we weren't looking at his face, you'd say it was effortless. <laughs> but you can see that face is kind of showing how hard he's working. But the speed on each pull, unbelievable. Great drive with the legs, good power through the glutes with the hips coming through. Just that eighth rep where he really had to fight and work hard for. The referee made sure that he worked hard. And this was the eighth. Yeah, this was the rep. Now look how long the referee makes him hold this for. Still holding it, still holding it. Once the knee's fully locked out, and then eventually gets the down signal. Went for nine to try to add to that lead, but eight reps is now the best mark as Evan Singleton, the T-Rex, is coming up next, making his first appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. Earlier on the Rogue Iron Game with Dr. Bill and Jerry Pritchett, this is a guy's name who came up as someone who might be able to put himself on top of the podium here. Evan has had an amazing year, and he is such a fierce competitor. Look at the eyes right now. He's kind of stomping around. He is ready to go. Loves a deadlift. He's pulled 1,000 pounds from the floor on the conventional deadlift. And I would say, looking at the events, there's no obvious weakness for, for Evan in this competition. He's going to be a threat. Looking bigger and stronger than ever. He's won two international contests this year, fifth place at the World's Strongest Man. He was doing amazing at the Shaw Classic, just made a small mistake, which ended up kind of affecting him mentally a bit. And we've seen that in the past, but it's an area he's improved a lot over this last year. Probably mentally stronger than we've ever seen. Physically, he's just, you know, a specimen, has so many strengths. Very, very fast, dynamic, explosive. Strong grip, strong back, strong legs. I'm excited to see how he does in this contest. He was supposed to be here in 2022. He suffered an injury in training that kept him out. So this is the first look that we've gotten at the T-Rex, Evan Singleton, at the Rogue Invitational. Five career international contest wins. And he has his work cut out for him here as he's going to need at least eight reps to tie Trey Mitchell for first place. But deadlift usually not one of his best events. I wouldn't say it's a bad event for him. It's just he we haven't seen him pull from this height too often. Sometimes he has exceptional performances on the deadlift, sometimes not so good. He's someone that can kind of really utilize a deadlift suit, which they're not allowed at the Rogue Invitational. 
And I'd say from, from where I've seen him deadlift before, his power off the floor is excellent. He sometimes fatigues a little bit towards the lockout. I certainly expect him to get some reps. I would say he's going to be somewhere between the, the four and six of Tom Stoltman in the next game. Very powerful. Usually starts off fast. There goes Evan Singleton. Oh, he's just lost the balance there. He's not used to this bar. Pose himself. This is where we're kind of talking about he's a bit reckless at times. This ball can't be so aggressive. He's going to need to take that slack out the bar and then keep pulling hard towards the lockout. And he looks like he's just composing himself a bit. Two good reps so far for Singleton. You see he's trying to drive almost too hard with the legs and the hips are shooting up. He needs to be patient with this deadlift. It's not a deadlift that you can just blast off the floor. He's going to leave it there. That's going to do it, Evan. Evan Singleton. I thought, I thought reps. potentially we might see a few more reps from Evan there. It wasn't the best start that he wanted. And he needs to kind of clear that out of his mind now because he does have good events. Right now, puts him in fifth place. And we were talking earlier about you know, athletes with weaknesses and if they can just get in the middle of the pack. Yeah. And if he can stay in fifth. But look at that first rep. He was all over the place. Just way too aggressive on the initial pull. A bit more patient on the second one. But it's just not one of those deadlifts that you can. If it's from the floor, you can be like that. Especially with the deadlift suit, you can use that aggression and blast the weight off. But this type of pull, that lockout is so important. And you need to maintain position. Went for a couple more, but just not able to find the groove on that and then wound up calling it after two good reps, which leaves now just three athletes remaining. Tom Evans will be up next. After him, it's Maxime Boudreau and then Bobby Thompson, the American Nightmare. So Thomas Close Evans is... Out. I've just been so impressed with Thomas over the last kind of year or so, two years, I'd say. You know, he had a great performance at the Arnold's recently. He's not someone that we're talking about as a threat for the title, but he's one of those performers that just keeps putting points on the board, keeps steadily improving. And I think if he can do that, give him a year or two, he is going to start, you know, knocking on the podiums and, and really pushing to win these titles. You mentioned the Arnold Strongman Classic. He was fifth in that competition, which was a great result for him coming into that field. Very good. Yeah, no one was talking about him at all. And, you know, just constantly improves. Deadlift hasn't been the best event for him over the last few years, but we have seen solid progress on it. So interesting to see how he'll do on this one. I, again, I don't expect him to kind of threaten the, the kind of Novikov, Mitch Hooper, or Trey Mitchell, but he'll want to put a few reps on there, get some points on the board to then build on for the rest of the competition. This is his first appearance at the Rogue Invitational. These are some highlights from that fifth place finish at the Arnold Strawman Classic. And that's where he, he PB'd on the deadlift there. Huge lift for him. His last competition, his best finish, was at the Shaw Classic. He finished sixth. That was after the Arnold Strawman Classic. So he's got a little bit of momentum now coming into his first ever Rogue Invitational. The thing is, he's competing against the absolute best every contest that he does. Fast, powerful athlete, great overhead power. The deadlift is, without question, his biggest weakness, but an event he's been working hard on. And I think seeing Evan Singleton only get two reps will give him confidence that he can pick up a few points. Evan's a former collegiate football player at the University of Richmond. He played offensive line, no surprise there. But got to live an offensive lineman's dream. Those guys don't get to touch the ball. He actually got to catch a two-point conversion in his school's win over Albany back in 2013. So he's got some hands. Guy can catch. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear our next competitor. A Rogue Invitational welcome. This is his first appearance at the Rogue Evan's making his way up to the top of the Tower of Power. Eight reps, still the best mark that we have seen from Trey Mitchell. Yeah, this big man from Texas looking strong. Oh! Let's see how Thomas Evans does. 
was on the Tower of Power. Two reps has to be the target in his head. If, uh, from, from my point of view watching, he'll be looking at that thinking, I can beat that. And that's a that's very, very good look great. He's got two. So this gets him points. And then he's, you know, if he moves this well, he's going to be thinking he can beat Tom Stockton's forward. This is very good. Three good reps so far for Tom Evans. Just constantly seeing this progress from Thomas Evans. Not able to get that one. Doesn't get that one. Is he going to try one more time to match Tom Stolten? I think he's okay. Still has time to make another run at this. And now it's just all about that fourth rep. This could be huge for Evans. Yeah, this, this will be big for Evans. It's also big for the, the guys ahead of Tom Stoltman because if he can match him, it would take a point away from Tom. So they will be watching contently. Thomas Evans, if he can match Tom Stoltman in a deadlift, just incredible progress. Not today, though. But even then, that is progress on his deadlift. Every time we see this man, he's getting better. Three reps right now. Evans from the United States. We'll get that flag fixed on the scoreboard. Oh, we'll take him. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> After that performance, why not? Yeah. He's doing very, very well. Look how easy that first rep was. Second rep was a tiny bit harder. And then it's, I think it was the fourth rep he went for. He just lost balance completely. Ended up falling over the bar. Three good reps for Tom Evans, and as you said, Laws, that fourth one is the one where he this one here. This was here. It, yeah, wasn't able to lock it out, just and then just lost, lost his that balance. balance. He was so close there. It wasn't far away. A solid result for Tom Evans as we now have two men remaining. Maxime Boudreau will be up next, and then it's Bobby Thompson to close things out. So just basing off, off results that we've seen in the past, Maxime is going to struggle a little bit on this one. His deadlifting isn't his strength, and Bobby will be looking forward to the deadlift. His deadlift has been going very well in the last few years. There's Maxime Boudreau making his second appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. And it's a nice position to be in when you get to go towards the end, because how other athletes do does dictate what you try and do yourself. He knows, Maxim knows he's not going to be challenging the, the six, seven, eight reps. He needs to focus on points on the board. One rep guarantees points. And then depending on how that moves, he's going to be looking at the two to three rep area. If he can pick up seven, six points on the deadlift, perfect start for the Canadian. He finished seventh overall and you saw his best performance last year at the Rogue Invitational. That was a second in the Yoke Log Medley. And I think the, the fact that we have the, the logs to flip over this year will be even better for him than the Yoke. That log Medley coming up later on this evening. His overhead is very powerful. Deadlift is an event that he doesn't enjoy so much. That's what's so great about Strongman, though. You know, it, it, different events it suit different types of lifters. And then when you want to win competitions, you just got to make sure you keep steadily improving, keep putting points on the board. Maxime Boudreau getting set to climb up to the top of the Tower of Power with the ninth man to go after that implement. Just a sniff of some ammonia there. Clears the head, gets the athletes focused. Really wakes you up if you've ever smelt that. It kind of gives you a kick in the back of your head. Um, it's always good for when you're going for a big lift. The last competition was in August, finished eighth at the Shaw Classic. Coming back from injury, though, this year. You know, he missed out on the Arnolds due to a nasty injury, and he's starting to come back into some good form now. Right. 
Boudreaux is on the clock right now. Already made one attempt, and that's going to give himself a reset. Yeah, that looked glued to the ground there. Just so frustrating as an athlete in that position. You just know it's just not going. And, you know, the crowd will be cheering for him to go again. And you've got to think, I've got good events coming. There's right. no point in kind of expending that energy. Smile from Maxi. He knows it's too much right now. Maxime Boudreaux and now Mateusz Kieliszkowski unable to get a successful rep. And he made two solid attempts and just wasn't able to get that thing past the point where he could really get it to move. Yeah, that wasn't going anywhere, unfortunately. So one more athlete to go. Bobby Thompson managed eight repetitions on this implement last year. He's a very good deadlifter. Fantastic performance on the deadlift at the Arnold Classic this year. I'm expecting to see some big reps. Thompson will be the final competitor out of the 10 and trying to beat Trey Mitchell's mark at eight reps. He was here last year at the Rogue Invitational. His first appearance was in 2022 when he took sixth place overall. This is an event that Bobby needs to get big points on. He's one of those athletes, has some exceptional events, has a couple of weaknesses as well. And he needs a good start on this one. Deadlifting is an event he loves. He'll be looking for a top three position for sure. And with that log medley coming up later, he can do some serious damage in that event. Oh, absolutely. Just mentioned there, he's very good overhead. We've mentioned how good he is at the deadlift. The pulling type of events that we're going to see, like the, the bull pull, he has a, a fused ankle, which causes him a lot of issues in terms of mobility, and um, he struggles more on those type of events. Coming off a seventh place finish at the Shaw Classic back in August. And with the next event being a pulling event, we'd really like to get some solid points on the board here. Yes, he, he, he needs good points here, so he gets to go towards the end. You can kind of be strategic then, figure out how much energy it's worth expending. Tactics become so important in these contests. And, you know, the first event is so vital because it sets up the, or the order of the next event. But Bobby will be just thinking right now, try to win this one. Eight, nine, ten points on here. He's going to be a very happy man. He's looking leaner than ever. But still extremely powerful. I think he's got the chalk in his hand. He gets called up to the top of the tower. When you're in a competition like this and you're just, you know it's your turn, but you're just waiting to get up there, what's going through your head? You're trying to switch yourself on more than anything. You can see that with Bobby right now. He's kind of staring up at the, the Tower of Power. He knows what he's trying to do. He's trying to visualize, get himself into that kind of headspace. Bobby's one of those athletes. He goes to a dark place, you know, to really kind of dig into that untapped strength. You hear these stories of of mums rescuing their, their children, you know, mm -hmm. and you're trying to recreate that fight or flight sensation, particularly for these power events, while still maintaining some kind of control. If you just go too crazy, you can burn up too much energy, you can forget kind of technique. It's getting yourself stimulated without being absolutely You see in his eyes, he's a focused man, but there's no rushing, he's methodical, every step that he takes up that, that tower. Bobby's a, a serious competitor now. He's someone who takes it very, very serious. His training, he's just a beast in the gym. Eight reps is the mark that he will be looking to beat. Bobby's someone that 
you know, he'll put his straps on the exact same way every single time. The feet go into the perfect position. He's done this a million times in training. It's just about execution on the day of a competition. Trey Mitchell with eight reps to lead. Mitch Hooper on seven and Alexi Novikov on six. Those are the big three targets that Bobby Thompson is going to be looking at. First rep looks fantastic for Bobby Thompson. He's maintaining good positioning, he's not rushing. It's three reps. Already tied with Tom Stoltman. There we go, up into fourth position now. Now he's got to be looking at Alexei Novikov, six. Goes up, gets the down high. What does Bobby Thompson have left? He's got six reps. Can he match, match uh, Mitch Hooper? Yes, he he's can. able to get it. What an effort so far from Bobby Thompson. Now he needs to use the time. If he uses this wisely, he can match. Trey Mitchell's and that eight. will tie, and he's going to call it. Great result for Bobby Thompson as he heads into an event that might not be one of his strengths, but this is a fantastic effort from the American Nightmare. He's going to be exceptionally happy with that. He's been working very, very hard on this event. Perfect start there. Trey Mitchell coming in, powerful as ever, looking absolutely huge. Eight repetitions. Bobby Thompson matches it. Mitch Hooper doing what he does consistently, picking up points and Alexei Novikov, six repetitions, the current champion. The first couple of reps look fantastic, but he really battled through those final reps to get that tie with him. He did, you know, he's looking powerful, but it, it, sometimes it's a bit of a poker face. You're trying to kind of hide how hard it actually is. Bobby knows that was a big, big solid result there to get eight reps. And this is where he really started to battle. He was using the time limit wisely as well, not rushing himself. I think he knew eight reps was what he had in his head. It's very easy to try and kind of, you get a number in your head and you kind of rush through the time limit. Use that time limit as effectively as possible. And got that tying rep with just five seconds left. Yeah. So well planned for Bobby Thompson as he and Trey Mitchell will split the points for first and second place. And you mentioned Mitchell Hooper just doing what Mitchell Hooper does, hanging out in the top three. Yeah, that's Mitch Hooper's strength is that he's consistently picking up points. But the deadlifting there from Bobby and from Trey, absolutely world class. Here are your event results as Bobby Thompson and Trey Mitchell both rack up eight reps. Mitchell Hooper will finish in third place. Alexei Novikov follows that with six. And then Tom Soltman able to hang on to a spot in the top five as Maxime Boudreau and Mateusz Kaloszkowski, the only two men to not get a good rep. Yeah, that's going to cost Kaloszkowski. He knows zeroing an event is not what you need against this caliber of competition. Very impressive with Thomas Evans there. Three reps continuing to improve on his deadlift. Tom Stallman won't be that happy, I think, with fifth place, but it's the first event and he's not dropped off too many points with some fantastic events to come. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with Trey Mitchell. Trey, Bobby caught you at the very end there. I saw you shaking your head. What were you thinking? Uh, just, you know, of course he has to tie me, you know, like. That last rep of mine, I was just not quite locked out. Maybe if I, you know, did it the first time, I had enough time to get the, a ninth rep, but no telling, you know, it's always the name of the game, you know, no one's going to know what happens. But me and Bobby, we've been rival for years, so it's, of course, I got a tie with him. <laughs> That's right. Why not just keep it going? The tower power is different than your traditional deadlift. What are you doing back home to simulate this? Uh, like I knew from last year, we used a squat, a squat bar. And so I bought a squat bar to train on. It's more stiff 
than a traditional power bar and of course a deadlift bar is super whippy. Maybe no one, no one again testing it, like it's very unstable with how the weight is connected to the bar. I'm thinking maybe kind of maybe a heavy uh, bamboo bar setup for next year for training it. Cool, thanks for the insight. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Now, Trey Mitchell with his second career first place finish here at the Rogue Invitational. He and Bobby Thompson tying with eight reps, and that was the one he struggled on. I mean, and that would have given him the win, but all the reps before that. He looked rock solid, you know, he really did. And uh, he's kind of already thinking about next year, but he's just put in a fantastic performance there. Sometimes you can overanalyze and overthink. He's doing all the right things. He's getting stronger every year. Needs to make sure there's no weaknesses in the whole competition. That is the key. You know, he's already got the win on this. He was second place on it last year. This is an event he's not dropping points on. Great start there. For official results and more from the Rogue Invitational, you can go to roguefitness.com slash invitational. Our first strongman event is done, and we will set the field for our second event in the CrossFit competition. It's Trey Mitchell, Big Tex, and the American Nightmare. Eight refs each as they tie for first place in the first of six events that the strongmen will face here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational.